All right, what is going on, mortal shell heads? I'm gonna teach you how to beat the Unchained. This is the final boss, and so let's get to it, all right? This boss can be very difficult. There's not really any room for parrying. He's such a big body that dodging is very important. So I highly recommend using the tile shell and just getting your dodge on, using that big bar of stamina to your benefit. And if you don't have enough and you're about to get hit, obviously hit that harden so that way you can survive. So right off the bat, biggest thing I gotta tell you is stay in front of him. I was doing the whole, you know, kind of Soulsborne type of style where I was trying to get behind him. Didn't have a lot of success. So I found that I had a better shot if I stayed in front. And what he's gonna do is he's gonna lunge at you. He covers a lot of ground. He's gonna swing at you with his arm. That I dodged through to the left. Dodge to the left, get in a couple hits, then get right back in front of him. And then that's where you're going to uh, hit him once or twice, kind of bait him to do his beak attack. He actually uses his beak to go into the ground. Use your dodge at that moment. The only time I would actually say use your harden uh, automatically is when he swings with his left arm on your right side. When he's about to do that, use your harden and then go ahead and get a couple hits. If you can hit him with quick succession, you can actually stagger him. And I'm using this long sword, I forget what it's called, but I highly recommend it because of the, the, the uh, distance you can cover with it. You don't have to be super close. The only thing is that, of course, it's gonna drain your stamina, which is good to have this shell because of the high stamina, but you can still get in trouble uh, with stamina draining too fast because of this heavy weapon. But it's so worth it if you can get a rhythm down because it puts a lot of more damage and it's able to stagger him. Be careful though when you do this because there is splash damage, so dodge back a little bit when you know he's about to stagger and go down. Just do a quick little dodge and then come back and get in a couple more hits. Um, again, watch your stamina. Don't be too greedy. If you don't have enough, just get your hit and, and back out a little bit. Kind of give more distance so that way he can um, you know, be baited again. He'll either get you with the beak attack again or he'll swing uh, his arms. And that's up to you. You can either harden if you need to, or you can just dodge it. And with this guy, with this shell, the dodging is much easier because it's kind of like you disappear a little bit. Hitboxes are very friendly. Uh, so I, yeah, of course, you gotta be using this shell. I think it's the way to go. Uh, he also does this thing where he calls his minions and don't we all love that? Isn't that just the best? These guys gave me trouble because of my long sword and how it takes a while to get a hit. <laughs> and so I had to space myself appropriately in order to be ready. And I would just clear them out one at a time. Uh, sometimes they would bunch up and I would get lucky, but be very careful. Back up as much as you need to in order to take them out. Don't be impatient, just do what you gotta do. Also be aware of the boss because he will be cheap and try and hit you. <laughs> Towards the end of the fight, he will actually go in the air and come down. And so you wanna be very aware of where he's at at the same time as taking these dudes out. So just try and do it as fast as possible, but at the same time, you do need to be patient because of the uh, stamina issue, right? So yeah, once you could get through that, he kind of goes into like this second phase where he does a spin attack. I hardened uh, for those pretty much all of the time. He does this kind of move where he goes underneath the water. He comes out of the water. Uh, when he was right out of the water, I did my best to lock onto him. Uh, that makes it easier to know where he's at. And then you can just roll away as he's coming down. Uh, that helps a lot. He also does more of this beak attack stuff. He actually gets it stuck in the ground. If he can miss you, he will get stuck for a moment and you're able to get some hits in right there as well. Uh, there's also this part which can feel like total BS. The first time you encounter it, you're like, what is this? It's like a whirlpool in the water and it's sucking everything through, including these minions. Now, at first, I just kind of left them alone. I didn't know what was going on. I was just trying to avoid it, but Unfortunately, if you don't attack these minions, 
he's able to heal up. I'm very convinced off of the few attempts that I had up until this point when I made it this far. I'm pretty convinced that when you actually attack them and, and kill them, that he will heal himself less. I think he's like absorbing them in some way. So yeah, you want to kill them as quickly as possible. It can be difficult because you're swirling around, they're swirling around. So you kind of have to time it and have those right angles on them. Just do the best you can. If he does heal himself, don't fret. Just stick to the plan. Uh, stay in front of him. Hit him with the long sword. Get him to get his beak into the ground. Attack him. And just be ready for those minions when they come and, and be ready to dodge his attack move. He usually does about one of them as long as you're not taking too long. If you could kill them afterwards as, you know, as quick as you can, he usually just does that one big attack. Um, there's been times where he does jump in the air though, so you got to be ready for that. But just do your best to separate these minions, like I was saying, and, and take them out at, at a good rate, good distance, and... Uh, just good luck. <laughs> that could be honestly one of the most difficult parts about this boss fight. And it can feel cheap, but if you're in control and if you keep that distance, and you keep backing up if you need to, you do what you got to do to stay in control and keep them at the right distance. Oh, another thing too is the waves. He does a couple of waves that will knock you down and it can be very detrimental to the whole fight. It can definitely kill you if you're not careful. So with this shell, you're able to dodge and roll pretty quickly and without fail for the most part. You should be able to dodge through these waves. So just time it, line it up, and make sure that you're dodging and rolling through the wave because if not, you're going to get caught and you're going to get pretty much tripped up. You're not going to be able to <laughs> recover in that moment. And if he's right there swinging at you or if these minions catch up to you, it can be game over. So definitely line up the waves, time it, double dash through it. It's basically like a dash because that's what we're doing here with this dodge because you're able to kind of disappear through it. And that's why this shell is so handy is that you're able to get through it and then without uh, min with, with using minimal stamina. Another thing I did unlock for this shell is that when I run, it does not take from my stamina. So if you can unlock that, definitely do it. It comes in handy. That way you know you can run and not be at the cost of your stamina. So that's very handy. I would definitely recommend doing that, especially when it comes to these minions. You can use the run instead of dodging to help you out and it won't cost you stamina. So yes, definitely get that ability. It's very handy. I also noticed that when the waves rippled apart and it became, you know, a bigger wave, that in the middle there was these big balls of like water that come up and that can hit you. They either come up or they come down. And I noticed that when I went to the left, like when I actually went through the waves and then stayed on the left side, that I was able to avoid those balls of water <laughs> because those can do a lot of damage and I'm not sure if he is throwing them or what, but I just know that if I stayed on the left, I had a better shot at not getting hit right there. So do that if you can. And that's pretty much all I have for you guys. I appreciate you watching. I hope this video helped. Uh, there's a couple things in there that I feel like I didn't have to explain, like when he's rocking back and forth and and the spin attack I kind of mentioned, but those, you know, you're going to harden your shell. You're going to dodge if you can. Kind of the basics. So I figured I would, I would focus on things that maybe you haven't thought of. Um, and I hope it helps. Let me know in the comments section. Good luck. And I will talk to you guys in my next video. Peace.
I see nothing now. Nothing at all. 